Have you ever thought about how we could make Mars our new home? Like solving the puzzle of success, it's a journey filled with challenges and exciting discoveries. Today, we're diving into a fascinating idea, creating oxygen on Mars to fuel our dreams of exploration. Imagine astronauts on the red planet making their oxygen. Sounds cool. Stick around, and we'll show you how it's more plausible than it sounds. So, how exactly do we go from a desolate and harsh Mars to a place where we can live and explore freely? Well, the answer lies in one crucial element, oxygen. It's the breath of life, not just for us, but for any potential Mars mission. And creating oxygen right there on the red planet could be the game changer we've been waiting for. Let's go back to 2022 when something remarkable happened. The Perseverance rover, equipped with the MOXIE instrument, achieved the seemingly impossible. It took the carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere and transformed it into a small but significant amount of oxygen. This was a historic moment, marking the first time humans had chemically altered another world's resources. MOXIE laid the foundation, proving that it's possible to make Mars work for us. However, Here's the catch. As impressive as it was, Moxie could only produce a mere few grams of oxygen per hour. To put it bluntly, that's barely enough to sustain life on a full-fledged Mars mission. We need much more if we explore and thrive on the red planet. What will we do? That's where some brilliant scientists come into play. They've proposed a groundbreaking method that takes the principles of MOXIE but cranks it up several notches. This new approach can generate a whopping 3 kilograms of oxygen per hour. Now, that's more like it. Here's the science behind it. Mars, just like Earth, has carbon dioxide in its atmosphere, but we're interested in the oxygen within that CO2. So, they start by compressing and heating the Martian CO2. Think of it as putting it through a Martian sauna treatment. Now, here's where the magic happens. They introduce this warmed up CO2 into what we call electrolysis cells. Electricity runs through those heated CO2 molecules inside these cells, splitting them apart and releasing their precious oxygen atoms. It's like turning Martian CO2 into life-giving oxygen in those cells. But we're still going. The freshly generated oxygen flows out, but it's still pretty hot. Breathing in hot gas isn't exactly comfortable. So, they cool it down until it becomes a liquid. Here's the ingenious part. They use the heat from this newly generated oxygen to warm up the incoming CO2. It's a self-sustaining cycle that ensures we maximize our oxygen production. Now, I know what you're thinking. How much oxygen are we talking about here? Well, these scientists didn't leave that to chance. They did the calculations. If a team of brave astronauts were to operate this machine for a typical 14-month mission, they produce an astounding 30 metric tons of oxygen. That's enough to break free from the Martian surface gravity and power our journey into the cosmos. But let's shift gears for a moment. Creating oxygen is essential, but what about living on Mars? It's not just about the science, it's about the people who make it happen. That's where the researchers from George Mason University and other brilliant minds come into the picture. They asked some critical questions. How many people do we need to start a Mars settlement? How can we ensure it's a short-lived experiment and a thriving community? And what kind of personalities can handle the unique challenges of the Red Planet? They discovered you don't need an army of settlers to kickstart a Mars settlement. Not even close. They crunched the numbers and found that just 22 people could set the wheels in motion. 
that's like a small town on Mars, ready to make history. But it's not just about the headcount. It's about the personalities, too. They looked closely at four basic personality types, agreeable, friendly, reactive, and neurotic. Let's break it down. The agreeable folks are the chill ones. They're not into fierce competition or strict routines. They're the easygoing ones who can adapt to change. Sociable individuals are friendly and love socializing but are not obsessed with a rigid schedule. Reactions are competitive and thrive on routines. They're the go-getters who don't mind a little friendly competition. Neurotics, on the other hand, are highly competitive but struggle with boredom or changes in their routine. Now, here's the fascinating part. Guess who proved to be the real Mars champions? Yep, it's the agreeable ones. They were the ones who stood tall in the face of stress, accidents, and challenges. Being adaptable and easygoing can be the key to survival on Mars. Researchers also looked at the bigger picture, the global challenges. What happens when things go wrong, like accidents or disruptions in the supply chain from Earth? Here's the answer. Teamwork and the ability to cope with adversity are the secret ingredients to success in extreme environments like Mars. It's not just about individual traits, it's about how people come together to tackle challenges as a team. So, there you have it, folks. We're not just dreaming of Mars, we're making it happen. Creating oxygen on Mars is one giant step, and it's not as far-fetched as it may seem. And with the right mix of personalities and teamwork, Mars could be our new home sooner than we think. Stay tuned for more Mars adventures because the Red Planet is calling and we're answering. See you out there.